bad. Have I done something to my ear thing? Where's the ear guy? Oh, here it is. Okay, here I am. <sighs> okay. Um, I love coming here, and it's always such a huge experience when I come, and I feel so lucky that I get to do this. Um, but this is basically my experience at TED, and it happens every time. I'm listening to a talk, and I get so overwhelmed by what the speaker's talking about, and I feel so caught up in the passion that he or she is talking about, and then they're describing how they got caught up in their passion, and it's transferring to me, and I realize that our brains are in sync, and I'm getting all, you know, verklempt, and I think I'm gonna cry, and then I think I have to stop everything I'm doing and get involved with this person's passion, and my life has changed, and just how they're telling me how their life was changed now, my life has changed, and this is the greatest thing ever, and then at the end, I jump to my feet, and I clap, and I wipe away a tear, and then literally three hours later, I'm in the lunch line, and I'm thinking, now, who is that guy? <laughs> He's the what guy? And then my husband will say, that's the barbershop doctor guy, or that's the global citizen anti-poverty guy. And I go, oh yeah, well that was the morning session. <laughs> and it's, there's something that's so horrible about it. I don't know what the, what the way to solve it. I mean, because I think we probably all feel the same way and it's not like, I feel like we can only really, we've just gotta be a month long and we just have one talk a day and then just go lay in the fetal position or something, right? <laughs> Because it's too much, it's such a roller coaster. Okay, then the other thing is, <laughs> when we got here, it wasn't immediately off obvious where the gift basket things were. And my husband said, so I wonder what's in the gift basket? And I was like, oh, I am sure that Ted has realized that people don't want stuff anymore. I mean, people are over stuff. We're all trying to minimalize our life. We're all trying to not care about things. And finally, I think it was kind of going that way. Ted has realized that we just don't want a big bag of stuff because that's just another bag of stuff in the world and I don't want it. And then like one second later, this woman comes up and said, here's your gift bags. And we were like, oh my God, <laughs> what's in the gift bag? <laughs> and then when we went in the room where we got to pick, it was so exciting and I couldn't believe how quickly I was going, oh, I want that. Oh, I only get to pick one. And then, at the idea that, you know, we, people pay a lot of money to come here, the excitement over the $200 Zappos gift certificates, it was like, $200! I can think that, that can't be a lot of money to you, but I too was going $200. I had ordered my shoes by the end of that day and they were delivered the next day at my home, my mother told me. <laughs> and I loved it. Okay, so let's just go through the conference, a few things that I thought about. Okay, so this, <laughs> the conference started out, okay, so the 10-year-old Indian girl came out, and I thought, oh my God, she is so cute. She is so cute. She is too cute. <laughs> and then, she was saying these wonderful things, and she was so perfect, she was really perfect. She was too perfect. <laughs> And then I thought, oh my God, this is the TEDx Prize Artificial Intelligence winner. She is a robot. And we are the Turing test and I see through it. <laughs> then I saw her around later. She seems quite nice. Okay. Um, okay, then Astro Teller, I don't know why he didn't explain his name right away. I, like, I could barely hear what he was saying. He was like, Astro Teller, Astro Teller. Like, was he predestined to be the head of Google X? Or, I mean, it, it sounds like a, like a Bitcoin cash dispenser or something. <laughs> like, he's like, Astro Teller, what a great name. Okay. Okay, so first when we were seeing the big balloons in the air, I thought they were like huge condoms that were gonna be flying through the air trying, but then I, I thought, you know, to deliver maybe condoms to the people of Mongolia or something like, I was sort of confused at first and then I was like, oh no, it's just so that they can deliver the internet to faraway places like Mongolia so they can download porn. <laughs> because we know that's what the world needs, okay. And I'm a little worried, I just hope the air traffic controller are not on strike still. I'm a little out of date with the news because there's gonna be so many things flying in the stratosphere. There are the dirigibles he's come up with that are gonna have the wind machines. I was frightening. Okay. Oh, the Airbnb guy, you guys. 
I love how a guy who had a mysterious night with a sexy, strange man who was going off to the Peace Corps, that the experience was so profound and maybe embarrassing, he had to explain it all by creating a $1 billion company. <laughs> explain this. <laughs> oh my God. I just want to say, as an aside, I stayed in eight Airbnbs. I was so excited about Airbnb, and I do love Airbnb. I think it's really transformative, like Uber is. I really think it's a huge game changer. I stayed at eight in 2013, over a six-month period, from a tree house in Hawaii to, I, I went crazy on Airbnb. I couldn't get off Airbnb, so I did these eight places to stay. The most wild one was the um, tree house in Hawaii, which I realized there are other beings that love tree houses, bugs. <laughs> it was filled with bugs, but that was okay. Um, and I, but I did love it. I loved the whole Airbnb thing. I met all these people, and in the end, I, the real result was <laughs> that I just realized how much I love hotels. <laughs> front desk and someone different there in the morning. Oh, okay. But I'm also for Airbnb, all right. Okay, now, oh, I've just written these notes. Skinny world poverty guy. Okay, that guy was one of the guys that I got so upset. I loved his vision and I loved that he had such a concrete way of dealing with the poverty. And when he started, my husband leaned over and said, he looks hungry. <laughs> Oh my God, I love this guy so much, and I'm so happy that he is so thin, as we should all be, but I was really happy he was thin because I thought, oh my God, when he was in that hut and they were passing out those, <laughs> those cups of porridge, if it was a really heavy person, it would have been so much worse than that. Oh my God, if it was me, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to die now. Okay, so I just, that's all, that's my bit for that. I just love that he's skinny, okay. Okay, oh yeah, the guy, oh. Oh, Uber, okay, I thought he was gonna tell us the true story of why they had to change the logo, <laughs> because I suspect that that big U means something like, I wanna fuck your mother in Indonesian or something like that, <laughs> and people were driving around. There's more to that logo change story. Okay. Um, Oh, and then that lovely guy last night who came up and started his little talk and then he sat down and we stood up and then he had a meltdown and I felt so bad for him because I have so been there. But I can think we can help him because that neuroscientist who works with PTSD is here in the house. <laughs> he can replay that horrible moment and then have calming lavender scent over him. <laughs> I must go for this type, but I was so in love with Linus Torvalds. I love him so much, and he helped my marriage a million percent this week. That's probably the greatest takeaway of the week. Because when I met my husband and he showed me a picture of his office, it looked the same way. And I was like, how can you not have a picture up? Like, how can you not have anything? And so when he showed his office, I was nudging my husband saying, oh my God, that's like you. And I thought he might tell a story about how he started out so sad and plain and then we were gonna see the after. No, he's saying he took away the walking desk, the one thing in that office that was sort of interesting, he took away. Um, <laughs> but I loved it and every, you know what I loved about him is that he just really knew so much about himself and he created this job that was right for his personality. And it really helped me in my marriage because I am more the visionary type. I'm like, my husband doesn't even want to talk about like a summer driving trip. Like, I'll go, where should we go in the summer? And he's like, this drawer doesn't pull out right. <laughs> and then he's so about the pothole in the row in front of him. And it really, it drives me so crazy. I just want to kill him half the time. But now, no, because of Linus. So thank you if you're still here. Okay. The astronomer. Oh, the alien civilization and the astronomer. Wasn't that so wild? Okay, this is what I thought. Instead of them thinking it might be big solar panels in the sky over that planet, what if it's just big advertisements? We don't know what that civilization is, right? Maybe the key to developing an advanced civilization is really just down to advertising. And it's just the entire sky. No, okay, I'm going on. All right. Um, oh my God, the virtual reality thing I thought was so incredible. 
I loved it so much. Actually, I was, we were one of the people who got the New York Times thing. <laughs> My husband was so mad, he kept saying, when that came in the mail in the New York Times, you didn't think it was so great. I watched all of those before. And I was like, I know, I guess I had to be in the room. I had to be with all of us watching that virtual reality, but it really was so fantastic. And then what was so disarming was that woman at the end who was so close, and she was so much closer than you would ever be to somebody that you didn't know. And it was so um, unnerving, and then it was, you could just really look at her. And I thought, oh my God, the porn industry is gonna go through the biggest boom! <laughs> Maybe not funny, but it's true. Just watch. <laughs> no one's saying that. Okay. Now I kept thinking, okay, we had Shonda Rhimes here and Norman Lear, these big TV producers. I feel like the procrastinator guys should have, we should make a TV show. Come on, we've got the talent here in the room, the procrastinator and the precrastinator. Is that what he called himself? I feel like I'm sort of a semi procrastinator. I'm in the middle of it, but I could see them having a show together and they could have to live together and you could have funny things or they're saying, let's clean the living room. No, I need to think about it a little more. <laughs> and then that made me think of the real TV show I want to pitch to you guys. It's me, the copy editor of The New Yorker Lady, and the design lady with the great Louise Brooks haircut in the fantastic dress. And we're like the Golden Girls, and we're in New York, and we all live together, and we only have people from TED come over to our house. <laughs> and so like we'd be getting ready for a party, or we could have little arguments about our names on the address. I would put commas between our name, and then the copy editor woman would say, no, it has to be semicolons. And then the design lady would say, no, it's gotta be slashes, because that looks so much better. And then we would throw a party, and that um, Dr. Little, the science and personality guy, would come over, and we'd say, there's about to be a party. And he'd say, no, I'm an introvert, I'm an introvert. And then we'd have to go put him in the back room. And then maybe the French mathematician with the beautiful cravat and the mysterious a spider pin, which he told me he does not divulge why he wears it. <laughs> he comes over and we have little discussions of why he wears that spider pin. Maybe it's because he ensnares women with his mesmerizing gaze and then kills them or something, I don't know. <laughs> And then maybe John McWhorter, the language guy, comes over and he's telling us more about how great it is to learn languages because of how it feels in your mouth to say the words, which, oh, I loved that so much. And then we could have like body humor, I'll tell you what I'd like rolling around in my mouth. <laughs> Fun jokes like that, okay. <laughs> and the chess woman could come over and, oh, this is my favorite line of all of Ted. To give checkmate is always fun. <laughs> And we make, we have a lot of laughs with her and then finally we find her in the back bedroom actually having sex with a Czech. And we realize, when she comes out, I never have sex with Slovakians, never. <laughs> come on, I come from sitcoms, people, all right. <laughs> then the vegetable guy comes out of the kitchen with a bunch of clarinets made of our carrots that we were trying to serve. Okay, maybe this is bad, but I feel like the guy who loves free market capitalism from the conservative think tank rings the doorbell and we all go, everybody be quiet! <laughs> okay, that's all I have, people. But I love being here, thank you so much. Thank you.